Hi everyone. So before we get started with today's show, I feel that I have a bit of a duty to um, be open and honest with you and to say actually today, right now, this week, I'm not okay. I pride myself on having truthful and authentic conversations and I think the reason why so many of you come back week after week is because you see that. And my whole reason for doing this podcast has been to help and to support and guide. And so many of you have messaged me over the past 18 months of the podcast telling me how powerful and helpful some of these episodes have been, these conversations. And so today I'm reaching out for your support and your help because this week has probably been the most unimaginably difficult week of my entire life. I've never hidden the fact that I'm Jewish um, and a lot of my family live in Israel. My parents have been there all week. My brother lives there with my nieces. I have lots of family from all sides. I know people that have been directly affected by what has gone on in Israel this past week and our hearts are broken. Our communities are shattered. We are walking around in a state of disbelief, numbness, anger, fear, worry, grief and sadness beyond belief of what has gone on to so many innocent civilians. But what makes it even harder is that if it was anywhere else in the world, if it was any other community, all of social media would be all over it. But not only are we grieving, are we, our souls have been destroyed by the atrocities that have happened with a massacre of over a thousand people, innocent civilians, people who were going to a peaceful music festival, who were living their lives, friends, family, loved ones, teenagers. They were slaughtered, they were massacred, they were killed, they were raped, they were kidnapped. And we're having to justify this on social media. We're having to justify why we need the help and support. And this isn't about politics, because no country is ever perfect. And Israel has never been perfect. But Israel has a right to exist. Israel stands for peace. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East that is liberal, that allows gay people to be out and proud. If you've ever been to Tel Aviv before, you'll know it's probably one of the most gay-friendly cities in the whole world. We are pioneers. And let me tell you, Israel is full of people with ADHD. The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because I'm not okay. My family, my friends, everyone, my community are not okay. And I need to use my platform because I've built this platform over the years and I try so hard to be an activist, an advocate, a voice for change, a voice for help and love and connection and compassion and understanding. And this is the same. Please believe me when I tell you that our lives will never be the same again after this. The Jewish community thought that after the Holocaust... We would never see this level of mass destruction and annihilation to one race of people. And it's happened again. Not since the Holocaust have we lost this amount of Jews. And not only that, in such a short space of time. And I'm sorry I'm using my platform. And if you don't agree with me, and I don't understand how you couldn't, but if you don't, feel free to unfollow me and feel free to never listen to this podcast again. But I feel like it's my duty, my right, with the platform that I have. And compared to many, many other people on social media, it's tiny. But if I don't use it to be able to share the stories that every single person I know that is in Israel right now knows someone who has died or been kidnapped or has a child in the army. And every mother and father is terrified. Every family member is terrified. I speak to my family every day and they are in and out of bomb shelters. And we need the world to wake up. So if wherever you live in the world and you're listening to this right now, I plead with you to look 
at all sides, but to know that Hamas are not pro-Palestinian. They are an evil, murderous cult whose sole charter is the destruction of all Jews and anyone that supports Jewish people, the, the complete annihilation and destruction of the state of Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. They're the only democracy that is spearheading liberal rights, that is promoting peace. And the Jewish people, let me tell you, our main, main connection, are the one that the thing that connects us all across the world, wherever we live, is love, peace, compassion. I don't even know how else to say it. Family, truth, authenticity, inclusion. Right now, the people I know who are Jewish and they're either in the diaspora outside of Israel or in Israel, they are focused on charitable donations, generosity, packing up goods and clothes and essentials and anything that is needed to help save people. We are donating whatever we can. We are activating groups of people who can help. People have stopped working. I can't begin to tell you that peace and connection and love and light is all that we want right now. But what happened in Israel, the massacre, the pogroms, the killing, I don't even want to go into detail, but if you follow me on social media, you will have seen the mind-numbing atrocities that Hamas have done to innocent civilians, rape, murder, annihilation of babies, women, the elderly, teenagers, families, thousands and thousands of families have been ripped apart. And so the reason why I come here and I talk about this on this podcast is because if there's anything that you can do if there's anyone, if you can speak to someone who maybe doesn't understand, who is ignorant, who's not, doesn't understand the, the Middle East, or just thinks that Hamas is a pro-Palestinian resistance group, let me tell you that they would slaughter you <laughs> and slaughter your family if you didn't believe in their beliefs. This is not about Palestinian rights. They directly want to amplify the situation so they can annihilate the state of Israel. And that is it. They don't care about the innocent civilians in Gaza. They don't care about the Palestinians. So right now, I am praying. I am doing whatever I can to help. I'm trying my hardest to look after my own mental health my children's, my family's, make sure that my family come home safely. And I am struggling. And for many of you who are listening to this who have got ADHD, we feel this so deeply. Our nervous systems are already completely sensitised. And we are probably struggling. And so if you know someone who is struggling, reach out to them. And those who have reached out to me on social media, you have no idea how much that means to me. Thank you so, so much. Please reach out to anyone you know who may be affected by this. Connection and love and compassion is what we need right now. No more hate. And so wherever you are in your community... Look out for people. Their mental health is probably going to be very, very shaky right now. And something that I have recognised that to help us, we need to help others. And so I hope today's episode is incredibly uplifting for you. I really enjoyed this conversation with Angela. But recognise, recognise that the world needs so many people to speak out and to support the Jewish people right now because after the Second World War, after the Holocaust, we never thought this would ever happen again and it feels 
very, very traumatizing for so many people who are have who have absorbed their own generation's worth of trauma from the Holocaust. And so many people who had to move to Israel because they had no other place to go. They were so displaced across Europe and Israel was their safety. And now it's not safe. And so we have Holocaust survivors that have been killed and massacred in Israel. I actually don't think I've had the words and I feel like I've not been very articulate and I feel like I wish I could say everything and I'm probably going to stop recording and forget and and know I've forgotten loads of things. But please, please know that the biggest thing that you can do if you're listening right now and you're not Jewish, please send a message to any of your Jewish friends, colleagues, anyone that you've ever known who has an affiliation to Israel or the Jewish community, they need your help and support right now. And as you know, with this podcast and everything that I work towards, it's all about community and understanding and acceptance and love and embracing who we are and not being judgmental. So thank you for listening if you've got to this point. And here is today's episode and thank you thank you for being here welcome to the adhd women's well-being podcast i'm kate moore youssef and i'm a well-being and lifestyle coach eft practitioner mum to four kids and passionate about helping more women to understand and accept their amazing adhd brains after speaking to many women just like me and probably you i know there is a need for more health and lifestyle support for women newly diagnosed with ADHD. In these conversations, you'll learn from insightful guests, hear new findings and discover powerful perspectives and lifestyle tools to enable you to live your most fulfilled, calm and purposeful life wherever you are on your ADHD journey. Here's today's episode. Hi everyone, so welcome back to the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Podcast. I'm Kate Moore Youssef, your host here as always, and today we are talking about self-leadership. We are also bringing in the notion of positive psychology, which I'm very excited to talk about all through the lens of ADHD, of course. And today the guest is Angela Raspas, and Angela is a self-leadership coach, author, speaker, and podcaster, and she helps individuals and organizations unlock their next level of potential through self-leadership and strength-based coaching and she has a background in marketing and now a diploma in positive psychology and she offers one-to-one coaching, retreats, small group programs which really empower people to achieve their biggest goals and create a positive ripple impact in the world. So this is just right at my street, anything strength-based, anything about self-leadership and really understanding that through the lens of ADHD is just totally my bag so welcome to the podcast Angela. (laughs) I think we've got lots to talk about because it's totally my bag as well thank you I'm really looking forward to having this chat. Oh well you know we've sort of come across each other a while ago and it's taken a while for us to get here but I genuinely believe that even though a lot of the conversations sort of weave in you know on the podcast with sort of similar conversations I think it's so important that we just keep talking about this because we've had women with ADHD diagnosed later on in life, this imprint on us that we've been wrong and we've been broken and we need to change. But actually, it's now understanding ourselves and realising that this potentially could be a most positive chapter in our life and always recognising the challenges and validating, you know, the stuff that we've gone through. But recognizing that this could be something one of the most empowering things that's happened to us is that something that you you know you work with and um are you working with a lot of other women that have been diagnosed later on in life as well i've had women start to contact me because they've heard me start to talk about it i mean i've i've been in business for myself for over 20 years and literally did not get um diagnosed till i was 53 so almost a year ago and so there was a lot of time there where i was working with without self knowledge and it's interesting how you were saying about that this could actually turn into 
one of the best things that's happened to us. That's actually the place that I've come to now for a couple of different Mm -hmm. reasons. But there were steps that I had to go through mentally and emotionally before I could actually say, hey, yeah, this late in life diagnosis is a really positive thing. And it can be for others as well. I'm sure I'm not alone if I said to you that the the sort of phases that I went through were surprise, like seriously, (laughs) like that explains so much of the way I show up in the world. And then there was like a sense of relief, like, okay, so it's not that I'm a little bit nuts or this or that, like there's actually a reason for this and I'm not alone. But then I got really cranky, like, oh my God, like why, why didn't anyone notice this? And this real simmering resentment that, especially in New Zealand and Australia where I grew up and spent all my time, that ADHD was the naughty little boy syndrome. And so us women were very, or us young women back then were very over, overlooked. Then I got really sad for all of the, you know, the, the cul-de-sacs and the dead ends and the, everything else that I went down or, or my ADHD impulsivity took me down. Then I got to acceptance and now it's a adjustment. It's like adjusting things so that I have what supports me so that I can thrive as a woman who has ADHD and as a businesswoman and as a mum and all those other you know, um, hats that we wear. But it took a little while to get to that spot. But now I can definitely view it as a positive thing. And that's not to minimize the, the struggles and the challenges because they're real. They're absolutely real. Yeah. It's not this like, yay, fun sort of thing. But if we can choose, and especially through the lens of positive psychology, if we can choose to look at the strengths that it does bring us and not to be afraid to get the strategies and the help and the assistance to plug the gaps, to plug the gaps. And then Mm. when, once you've done that, like suddenly there is so much more opportunity available to me because I understand the way I'm wired and I can make different choices. So I think it's hugely exciting. And for women who, who come to work with me or talk with me, or or I'm sure you, you have them all the time in your backyard saying like, if I bring those pieces together, I can see the world in a really different way. It's like having a new pair of glasses. So it's a really positive thing. Yeah, you described that process and that process of like the grief and the anger and then the acceptance is something I often hear. Definitely something that I went through myself, but also what I hear a lot of the women go through. And I think sometimes it's hard to get out of the the sadness and the anger and the grief unless we have a little bit of help and assistance. And that's why, you know, coaching can be so helpful, I think. Are you able to tell us a little bit about what brought you to your diagnosis? And I guess what led you to being there and and how that has helped you move forward in your business? Well, funnily enough, there is uh, in Sydney, I do this very long walk at least once or twice a week with a good girlfriend around a thing, a place called Narrabeen Lakes. It's about an eight and a half kilometre walk. And this friend of mine had been diagnosed. And when we were walking, she kept dropping little hints like, I think you should check a, a diagnosis. I think you have probably got it. And I was like, very dismissive. I'm so sorry looking back now because I had the thought, well, well, you just think everyone's got it now that you've been diagnosed. You know, that idea of once you choose a car, you see it everywhere, the same sort of concept, you know, the reticular activating system kicking in. But then the more I listened and I started to actually see little reels on Instagram, which I'm sure a lot of us see and went like, oh, is that ADHD? Oh, really? Is that? And then my daughter got diagnosed. She has a a couple of different things going on and she had got the diagnosis and I started reading up to learn more about it for her. And it was when I was reading all the background material, I was going, I can't deny this any longer. And I actually said to my daughter, she's 20. "Um, My friend thinks that I have ADHD too. And she went, oh, duh, where do you think I got it from? Why do you think it's (laughs) taken so long for me to get a diagnosis? Because you thought I was normal (laughs) and stuff like that. And I have a good friend in New Zealand who works with um, neurodiverse people. And I said to her, oh, ha, 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 I think I might have ADHD. And she went, well, I've actually seen many of that. And I went, that's it. Okay. I've got to start listening. So I did, I went off and use in Australia, you need to get a referral from, from a doctor to a psychiatrist where they put you through a lot of questionnaires. One of the challenges for me was you needed to show that the symptoms were present before the age of 12. But unfortunately, both of my parents are in nursing homes with dementia. So those weren't questions that I could ask. But funnily enough, when I went back to New Zealand 12 months ago now, I found 
now my old school reports. And I always had the memory of doing really well at school. And I did. Great marks, etc. But this time I looked at the comments from the mm. teachers. Things like, Angela needs to remember there's more people than just her in the class. Angela needs to think before she opens her mouth. Angela should take more care in the in the um, playground. Angela, and I was like, oh, my God. I showed it to the psychiatrist. He said, there's your proof. And yeah. we decided upon um, – going down the medication route and the first time I took medication I had literally no idea that my brain could be that quiet. I had no idea. I know medication isn't for everyone, totally respect that. I know it doesn't work for everyone. I was one of the lucky ones. It was it was gobsmackingly incredible and I just – the difference from since, since then, we, we – changed a couple of times just to get the actual dosage right but now what happens the way that I like to describe it you know those little minions the little yellow guys that you see in the movies little cartoon characters yeah well it used to be before I took medication when I'd wake up in the morning it's like they were just yay she's awake and like bang 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 your know, ideas and, and things you have to do and everything just going crazy and now it's like they all line up in a row and wait their turn. It's like I could deal with one thought at a time. It's it's phenomenal. I just did not know that was possible. It's not perfect, wow. but it has improved so, so, so much. And from a from a business perspective, what it's done for me is the impulsivity and the compulsion. Those were the two overriding factors in my world. Like I change directions, you know, by six times by lunchtime and then one after dinner. You know, I, I I just found it really hard to stay on one track. And now and I always thought, you know, my identity, my my self belief was very damaged. Um, because I saw myself as someone that was flaky, that couldn't be consistent, had flashes of brilliance, but then lots and lots of mediocrity. So, you know, I, I think that is common to a lot of women that I've spoken to now with ADHD who had that same poor self-image in lots of areas. And I'm healing that. I'm healing that with help from a great therapist, from an ADHD coach, from, you know, having the medication and just finding my tribe you know, talking to other women, hearing their experiences, listening to podcasts like yours, looking after myself so much better than I ever have, you know, physically and emotionally. It's just, it's been a game changer, utter game changer. So I'm just interrupting today's podcast just to give you a bit of an update on the different events and workshops that I've got going on. I don't want you guys to miss anything. So you may have seen on social media that I have an exclusive event with ADHD Pioneer. She's a psychotherapist and author, Sari Solden. She's been on the podcast. It was about a year ago and she is incredible. She's written numerous books, um, but her book, um, which has been pretty much on my desk ever since I started coaching ADHD women, A Radical Guide for Women with ADHD is incredible and I recommend this to so many people who have just been diagnosed so when she came on the podcast a few well it was a year ago I said to her I would absolutely love to do an event with you and finally it's happened so this is happening on the 19th of October at 7 p.m UK time and we're going to be doing a live conversation interview but also a Q&A so if you show up live and you're there you will get the opportunity to ask Sari anything you want with regards to neurodivergence ADHD and really kind of tapping into her knowledge and wisdom because she's seen it all in her 35 years of being a psychotherapist in this area so all the details are going to be on my website adhdwomenswellbeing.co.uk that's also going to be on today's show notes please head to those links and I promise you you will not be disappointed with this conversation with someone who really knows her stuff and has all the answers I hope for anyone that's just starting this journey with ADHD and also if you head to my website you'll get an update on a nervous system four-part workshop that I have created and this is all based on polyvagal theory so if you are interested in help with regulating, calming, soothing your nervous system, that you've really noticed that you live in a very sort of hypervigilant, sympathetic um, state of being in this sort of place where you don't quite feel settled and you want to be able to find new practical tools and daily practices to help calm and regulate, I would highly recommend you have a look at the workshop series and see if it's for you. There's only a few places left. 
And finally, just to let you know, the hormone series is still going strong. I can't get over how many people have downloaded it. And I'm adding new content right now. We've got two new speakers that are just going in, Kate Shepard Cohen and Nicola Harker. Nicola is a doctor and she specializes in self-compassion. And Kate Shepard Cohen created the Menstrual Cycle Support Resource, which is going into over 500 GP surgeries as we speak. Both incredible women who know their stuff, who really understand the neurodivergent women, the impact of hormones and how we can help ourselves through these challenging times. So all the information is on my website, adhdwomenswellbeing.co.uk. Now back to today's episode. I think, you know, the way you've just described all, you know, the different analogies there is just, first of all, I resonate so much, so, so much. And I'm (laughs) glad to hear for you that medication has, has helped. And like you say, it's not perfect and we do have to tweak and try different things. But for you to be able to, I think it's this combination, isn't it, of understanding um, awareness and implementing different ways of of being and then you know the medication to bring that all together as well is um, is fantastic and you know I also you know with the school report I look back and I saw very similar comments in different ways but could see that now (laughs) that you understand what ADHD looks like in girls just see it's just so glaringly obvious but there was just yes. no, there was no support there. It was just kind of like, just change, do better, try harder, fit in, you know, just do whatever you need to do just to kind of concentrate, but with no scaffolding or support or guidance or, or help at all. And it was the boys that were that were getting that help. Um, so yeah, I just hope that now that we are getting our kids diagnosed and we're able to kind of like break cycles in schools and teaching but like you say it's a healing process if if we are getting this diagnosis Mm. not 40s and 50s and I love the word that you just used the scaffolding like that that idea of us actually building a scaffold of support around us and really exploring what does that look like for an individual because we're going to have commonalities as women with and business women with ADHD and women in general with ADHD we are going to have some commonalities but there will be unique you know bricks that we need to put into our scaffolding and it's going to look different for each of us like from a from a well-being perspective I took a sabbatical now, it did coincide with um, some, some things that happened with our family and I really needed to be available for one of my family members. But having that time, and I'm very privileged to have been able to take it, but it allowed me for the first time in my entire freaking life to actually prioritise my own self-care. Mm. I'd nibbled around the edges at it. You know, I knew that it was important, but I never prioritised it. And I think part of it is because I never paused long enough because of my wildly, you know, know enthusiastic self aka ADHD self um, never really stopped for long enough to ask myself what I really wanted and needed and having that sabbatical actually gave me the time to build that scaffold exactly how you know that word you just used and it's that scaffolding which is keeping me not just upright but elevated these days it's a very very different life when I've got those those nutrition and movement and and spending time in nature I've even done some you know mindfulness I can actually go to yoga and keep my mind on the pose instead of thinking about the 17 other things that I'm going to do later that day it's that ability to focus which has really changed a lot really inspiring to hear empowering to hear and you know you only just got this diagnosis you know just over a year ago and so just to see what can change in a year um I think you know will Mm. be very helpful for a lot of women out there especially women who kind of think oh I'm in my 50s you know what's the point what's the point getting this diagnosis and you know (laughs) what's it going to help me with but actually that that internal self and and we're going to come on to this of like self leadership mm. and maybe you can explain to us a little bit it sounds all a bit sort of corporate and but <laughs> actually it's not it's actually quite a sort of i see it's quite a spiritual term um because we're going back to that internal compass of not looking for external validation not being guided by other people and, and other ways of being and it's actually going back to our ourselves and, and and in working intuitively with with what is good for us that's my take on self leadership how would you describe it i think you just described it beautifully 
absolutely beautifully that very much that piece about the internal compass when I started to move my work into this area I was a little bit concerned that it did have a bit much of a corporate feel it was like or oh, maybe this isn't for me as an individual but it is absolutely for every woman as an individual because it is about coming back to yourself it is about prioritizing what it is that you are here to do if you're in a business sense I guess but also just really tapping in and, and working out what are my strengths, what are my values, you know, what is my vision for this next chapter of my life and who am I becoming, who do I want to be, that self-knowledge place, which is the way that you would describe the inner compass, is the beginning of everything and really understanding what your strengths are. I became um, accredited in strengths profiling because when I was studying positive psychology and was exposed to the concept of strengths and recognising how important important it is as a woman with ADHD to stop trying to do things the way that other people think they should be done and instead to leverage the natural strengths that I had. That was hugely, hugely important. And that idea of disconnecting from other people's definitions of success, letting go of the conditioning that us, especially as women, have experienced our entire lives as to the way that we should turn up and should do things. Self-leadership is about recognizing that that's not our truth. So that's the first piece. The second piece in it is flexible thinking. And so the more I looked at these pieces that I brought together, the more I could see that it was my own life experience as an ADHD person, which made me understand more, more how important these were. So the flexible thinking is about not having all or nothing thinking, not catastrophizing, not getting um, stuck in that socialization piece of how things should be done. Being really aware of our inner critic, you know, that internal dialogue and the sort of crap we say to ourselves sometimes um, and being able to sidestep that. And then the next piece was about emotional intelligence. So mm. this is about self-regulate self-regulation, you know, being aware of our emotions. Go think of ourselves as like an iceberg. So when you're having a feeling, what's above the surface, but then digging below it and finding the cause of that, what's triggering that? How can we take care of ourselves and understand more about what we're feeling and why? And then from there, once you're bringing those pieces together, then it's about intentional action. And that's very much, again, where positive psychology comes in because we're setting the right goals for us. We're not borrowing from somebody else's playbook as to what are the goals that we should have. It's about using positive psychology to create towards goals, so goals that inspire and motivate and excite us because then you're much more likely to take action, not goals that we think we should have at whatever mm -hmm. stage of life and that that was really the model that I had for for self-leadership and then I had to add the last piece which I found out in the last 12 months which is the vitality piece and that's about taking care of yourself as you talk about so well you know the well-being part we cannot ignore it because it, it doesn't matter if you're aware of your strengths and if you're you're using flexible thinking and you're becoming emotionally regulated and you've got clear goals, if you've got no damn energy and you're like, you just don't want to get out of bed in the morning because you're not eating yeah. well or you're not exercising or you're not taking time out, then it doesn't matter if you've got all those other skills. So vitality to me was the essential final ingredient in the recipe. And yeah, it's very much about in a compass deciding who you want to be, how you want to show up, and making sure that you're well resourced to do that. And so to me, it feels, it's just a way of living your life, but a very aware, switched on yeah. way of living your life. That's exactly it, isn't it? It's the awareness of like all the things that you were just talking about, sort of the internal dialogue, emotional intelligence, the triggers, understanding, that all is self-aware. And so often, you know, especially um, when we have really suffered with emotional dysregulation of not understanding, mm. like, what's made me, like, what's led to this, you know, outburst, this, this big sort of blow up, you know, all these different things. Because if we don't understand what's beneath it, how can we prevent it from happening again in the future? And very exactly. often it's a, it could be another family member that, that sort of triggers us and it kind of, you know, and that's when, you know, coaching and therapy is incredibly helpful because very often we'll have another ADHD person in our house and that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come to blows with <laughs> it. That can, that can be really hard work, especially if you're the parent, because this sort of 
idea of co-regulating that we as the adult as the parent are the co-regulators the, the one that's almost like managing the energy in the house and so if we're regulated there's a very high chance that our children are going to be regulated and it's going to feel like a much calmer environment and it is like you say it's about emotional intelligence and maybe if someone's listening right now and they sort of heard this sort of term being talked about, what, how would you describe emotional intelligence and how can we harness that a little bit more? Oh, it's I, I reckon it's one of the, the key parts of life. It's about understanding what's going on inside. And the only way you can do that is by pausing. One of the the stories that I have no concern about sharing these days is the fact that I've been in active recovery from addiction for 16 years. And when I was first getting sober, I was taught very, very strongly about emotions because when you are a person who's addicted to substances or particular behaviors, what you're doing is you're masking uh, fear and pain. And when your anesthetic is taken away, suddenly you can feel all of the emotions and you've got to do something with them. So I had a crash course in emotional intelligence, shall we say. But what I've then since learned over the years is that if we pause and choose to respond rather than react, then we've got just a much better chance of being that great emotional barometer for our household, for our lives, for our businesses, for our kids, for everything. So how do you do it? It's about noticing the feeling. Now, when your emotions are really heightened, you can usually feel it in your body in a certain place. Some people, it's their throat. You know, some people, it's their chest. Some people, it's their belly. Where does it hit you? And when you notice that that feeling is coming up, that is the, um, the cue for you to go, ah, what's going on for me? And to pause and find out what's under the surface. I find that there is, um, and anyone can Google this, look for the emotions wheel, and it will show you the top level emotions like, like fear and anger and sadness. But what it will do is it will then go right underneath that word and split it out into lots and lots and lots of other different words. So you can be, start to become really emotionally dexterous, de sorry, and have emotional dexterity, where you can yeah. begin to understand okay, what am I actually feeling and where does it come from? And if you practice that, you'll get much, much better at understanding what it is that is happening that is making your emotions run up and down. There's a brilliant little app you can get in the app store called the Mood Meter. When you look for it in the app store, it looks like a little, a little square with the red, yellow, green and blue um, segments in it. We were taught about that in the positive psychology diploma and it's a little mood meter that a few times a day you pause and it asks you, how are you feeling? And then it gives you a little grid which says, are you having high or low energy and is it pleasant or unpleasant? Like for right now, for example, I've got low energy and it's really pleasant. So I'm not bouncing off the, off the rafters. I'm really focused in this conversation. So it will open and say, okay, on this little grid – Pick a box where you think it's going to be. Is it moderate or low, et cetera? And then it will give you all these different words and you pick the one that is closest to what you're feeling. And when you're doing that sort of thing four or five times a day, that's what we did over a two-week period, you became really emotionally literate. You started to really understand what you were feeling. And when you have that insight, your ability to be able to respond to what's going on and give yourself self-compassion if you need it, or, you know, pat yourself on the back if you've done something well. Leave the room if you're feeling that you want to yell, <laughs> whatever the case may be. So um, I really recommend grabbing that app. I think it's like about $1.40. It's not a big ex expense, but it's a great way of getting a much greater understanding of your emotions. And that gives us, as women with ADHD, a much higher chance of regulating ourselves if we really know what's going on and yeah. we're not just guessing or, or pushing oh. it down or shoving yes. it aside. Yes, incredible. Thank you. I'm definitely going to look into that app. And, you know, you described that mood roller coaster that so many of us relate to. And we can wake up one morning, we're bouncing with energy, full of ideas, like top of the world. And literally the next day, it's like, oh my God, like I need to close my business down. Everything's dreadful. I'm just want to stay <laughs> in bed. Um, something, you know, I, I've experienced, you know, so much myself and you just don't understand where that despondency has come from or the frustration or the irritation. And, you know, sometimes we just go, oh, I just feel awful. But actually, if we break it down, 
we can understand. And it always goes back to me. For me, it's for sure. It's about sleep. It's about, you know, commitment, Mm -hmm. what's coming up for me that I'm sort of like sort of future tripping on, like there's a bit of anxiety and that's, that's building up inside of me, even though it's happening in like a week's time, it's just sort of there humming in the background. And so, I can understand that when we have more awareness and I can just go, oh, I understand that 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 thing's happening in a week and I've got lots of stuff on and I'm trying to fit in everything else. That's why I'm feeling more irritable than normal. Mm. Another, I I would say there's a book by Brene Brown who, I think it's her latest book and I can't remember the name, but it's a big red book. Yeah. And it's Atlas, all about Atlas of the Heart. That's it. The yeah. Atlas of the Heart. It's a Brilliant. great yeah. book to understand our emotions and the, the vernacular, the vocabulary around it. It's like a deep dive into really understanding our our moods, emotions, and everything, and giving it um, giving it a bit of presence so we can kind of go there, like you say, instead of instead of pushing it down. Um, it's just kind of giving it a bit, bit of space, a bit of compassion and go, okay, that's what, you know, that's what we're feeling. And actually that is what brings us to all the good stuff as well. You know, like we have to sometimes trudge through the darkness and really sort of sit in it for a little bit to kind of go, oh, okay, that's not what I want anymore. That's not how I want to feel. And almost kind of like thank those more challenging moments because that really helps us um like you say move away from and move towards the values and the things that do light us up and do um energize us instead of staying in that place of sort of depletion and exhaustion and sort of keep pushing and and trying different ways even though they're not working and that's why it's so it's so tied to the concept of self leadership, because when you do have that um, emotional literacy, you can make that choice to lead yourself away and say, "Okay, this isn't working for me." And so, what can I choose instead? But if we never pause and actually investigate, you know, lift up the cover and have the courage to peer underneath and see what's really going on, and make a self-supporting choice. And when I when I was recognizing, like, what my particular strengths are, and deciding to design my business model around those, so that they're actually at the heart of the business. So instead of always feeling, well, I should be doing it this way, and I find that hard, but just pull up your socks, Angela, and get on with it. Um, no, let's do it in the way it's allowed to be easy for us. Like so, bring. That's why I'm just a huge believer in understanding those strengths. But there's something else that I think is really important that we can do when we are recognizing that we are feeling dysregulated and all those wonderful ways in which you just described how those feelings can happen. It's starting to get clear on what is it that can help you change your state. So I know, oh, I, I can't remember who told me this, but a few weeks ago I, I was having a conversation with someone who's very literate in ADHD and she talked about an article about that we experience mini depressive episodes, not depression, but depressive episodes very often. And just how you were describing it with that despondency. And I know with me, I can go from reminiscing to ruminating to remorse really fast and can feel, yeah, like the whole world is caving in. And then the next day, everything's fine again. And knowing that that is actually a cycle that I've got evidence that I go through that cycle a lot. It's not fun, but I know I'll come out the other side. So that's when having the conversation with yourself, like one of the traits of self-leadership is that the way that you talk to yourself, the way that you acknowledge what's going on, the way that you reassure yourself that, ah, we've been here before. And one of the things I know that works really well for me is music. Like I said to my husband, when I'm going through this, because I'm, I'm not getting him as part of my scaffolding, remind me, please, that I've been here before and then tell me to go and play some 80s rock and then I'll be fine again <laughs> in, about, in about 10 minutes. That's true. That's it's brilliant. Really true. I've, I've actually got a playlist exactly for this moment, for this, yes. this time when I'm really just feeling low and, oh, I just kind of just want to kind of run away. I've got like almost <laughs> like my dopamine boosting playlist, which I put on... <laughs> take my dog for a walk, go into the fields, play it on loud um, oh, yes. and literally just like kind of shake it out, dance it out, sing it Shake out. it off. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's a real thing for us, this. Mm. 
Mm, absolutely. And just knowing that and knowing that, look, this is just this is just something that I cycle through and reassuring yourself, which is why that that self-leadership practice of, of self-reassurance is so important. There's there's actually one other little tip I'd, I'd love to share as well, especially for those of us who have businesses, because we can sometimes fill in the gaps in our head if we've put a proposal out or we've had like a sales conversation and we're waiting for someone to make a decision and we haven't heard from them. And then we start to think that, you know, know that went terribly and they're going to say no and it's all over and maybe I should shut my business and you know because we can do that we get on that slippery slope I have every one of my I have every one of my clients create a fabulous file okay now a fabulous file is evidence of your fabulosity so you capture it starts with just an envelope but but by now I've got a great big box full of stuff because I've been in business for a long time. But as the name suggests, it's feedback, it's testimonials, it's cards, thank you cards, it's photos of, of flowers you've been sent, it's it's photos of you know events that you've hosted, it's whatever it is that reminds you that you're doing a good job. And so you keep all of that information and it has to be accessible and visible. I've got it all up in a, gr- or a big chunk of it on a great big cork board in my office now. So if I start going down that slippery slope where I basically think I suck and my, my business is falling apart, I go and have a really good look at that fabulous file and I ground myself back into the knowing that I'm doing a good job, that I'm making a good contribution – all as well. You're just doing one of your cycles again. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Oh, and if you looked at it whilst playing your your um, playlist, then hey, double whammy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what you're what you're sort of saying then it's like we bring it back to those ADHD traits, isn't it? It's like how prone we are to rejection sensitivity. Um, yeah. We've got this default mode network um, part of our brain that just is the negativity bias, and so when we're combining that together. It's really, really hard. Like, yes, we have all these fantastic ideas. We're entrepreneurial. We are excited, impulsive and spontaneous and all yep. this. But on the on the flip side, we, you know, one slightest bit of feedback or criticism or someone sort of said no to something, the spiral just is just incredibly fast. So to have something yeah. accessible there that can show us that, um, you know, just one small hiccup doesn't mean the a catastrophic end to everything we've put our hard work into. And again, also with regards to our memory, it's, you know, if it's not there in front of us, we won't know it's there. We won't remember it's there. And it just, we won't even know where to find it. So I think that having that cork board is, is fantastic. And um, yeah, this is such good practical um, help and advice because I think so many women will be kind of resonating exactly with what you're saying. And what you said, you know, just going back slightly to what you said about no, you know, that, that the shoulds of doing business the way other people are doing it. We would never say that to an artist, would we? Like we kind of respect no. artists <laughs> of, you know, their mm. their specific niche or the way they like to work is oil painting or watercolour or sculpture. And we would never turn around and go, I don't think you should do that. That's not how so-and-so did it. <laughs> so, you know, that's not how they were successful. We just kind of accept that art is just like, but with business, we sort of just we see it very one dimensional and if we don't play by those rules and there's something wrong with us, but actually we are the mavericks and the entrepreneurs and the ones with those kind of out of the box ideas. And so doing it in our unique way is often the thing that sort of makes us stand out, but it's very hard for us without the ADHD diagnosis of, you know, being able to kind of differentiate and say, the my uniqueness the way I do things is the thing that's going to set me apart but when we get that diagnosis or we have the awareness it's like okay now I can start blending the awareness my energy the um the self-reassurance or the resources the scaffolding and create a business in our terms working towards our strengths maybe you can tell me what are the strengths that you've identified and how you've implemented them into your business Mm, absolutely and I just want to pick up on one other thing that you've said first because I think it's really important this idea of us being able to embrace our way of doing things one of my theories as to why I think we find this or can find this difficult is if we go back in time like when we were younger I'm thinking particularly in my teenage years and early 20s 
I had a lot of, and I'm sure a lot of women with undiagnosed ADHD had the same ex- or a similar experience. There was a lot of being told I was wrong. I was too loud. I was too much. I was too this. I was too that. And I had to work out in my own brain, I, I recognize this now, how could I make myself less and smaller and more acceptable? How could I find the right way of doing things so I would fit in? You know, you mentioned Brené Brown and Brené Brown talks about, you know, that that feeling of shame of not being right we can't belong we have to work out how to fit in and when we're doing that we are denying who we actually are so is it surprising that when we the reins come off and we get to run our own business but we're not confident with being who we are because we were always told quite often how who we are is not okay and so this this sort of almost like renaissance is happening, I've found, when I've had this diagnosis because I've suddenly realised, well, gradually, with the help of a really good narrative therapist, who I am is absolutely fab. It's fine. I'm not special, but I am unique. And I think that distinction is something that I'm, I'm hanging on to. And as a part of that, recognising now that the strengths that have been identified through the strength profiling, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously aware of some of my strengths, we all are, but we're also, we have blind spots. We don't recognise or appreciate some of our strengths because we don't see them as valuable, A, because they become easy, they're very easy, they come easily to us, therefore, you know, well, they can't be that valuable if they're easy, can they? That, that dichotomy that goes on in our head, but also because we don't necessarily see them in action in traditional business mode. And we don't realize quite often that we can do things our way. So some of my strengths are esteem builder and connector and catalyst and self-belief and action and courage. And all of those absolutely fall into place when you look at the way that I work with people and have worked with people over the years. Someone once described me, and I loved this, it really made me smile. They called me the uh, the Brené Brown of business, which I'm such a Brené Brown fan because this woman said people come to you to, to find out how to build their businesses how to you know establish and grow their businesses but they actually find out who they really are and I loved that that I felt really seen when when she said that to me she was a mentor and my embracing those strengths and recognizing that helping people believe more in themselves and being a catalyst for their ideas, like taking their ideas and now I recognize it's my ADHD strength of ideation and non-linear thinking, which is incredibly valuable. But without, without helping people believe in themselves, it doesn't matter what skills you've got because if you think you're crap, <laughs> that's going to be reflected in what mm. you do or don't do. So that self-belief piece, because to me, self-leadership is grounded in self-worth and it builds self-belief. That's what it's about. The practices and the principles and the skills that that I practice and I teach, it's all about building your self-worth. That's what sits underneath it. Because if you think you can do whatever it is you want to do, you probably can. But if you think you can't, if you get stuck in that mindset that we're not Mm. good enough which so many of us have had that, that pattern of, um, of reinforcement over the years, it's really hard to break free. But yeah. the diagnosis does open a skylight. And I, for one, am never going to allow that skylight to close for me or for any of the women that I work with ever again. Oh, I love that skylight. It's, that's a beautiful term of like, yes, because it kind of opens us up to, to anything that's possible. You just described beautifully your your strengths. And I was listening to you thinking, OK, how can women work with you? You know, if someone's listening now and they are desperate for, for more help and assistance, what have you got on offer? How can people get in touch with you? And I know you mentioned about a strength based test. Is that part of your offering as well? Mm. Yeah, it's it's one I think it's a really good place to start. So strengths profiling, it's a it's a questionnaire. It's done online through um, a place called Capfinity, which I'm a an accredited practitioner in now. And they look at your strengths in terms of behaviors from three angles. One is from an energetic angle. So does it energize you or does it drain you? From a use angle, how often are you using it or are you avoiding it? And also from a competence angle, are you good at this? And this is all self-reporting. 
supported. So it's not me telling you what your strengths are. It's you identifying it from these three angles with the way that they question them. Then what you find from there is you have realized strengths. So these are the things that energize you. You're using them often. You're good at them. You have unrealized strengths. They energize you. You're good at them. But for some reason, you're not using them very often. Um, you have weaknesses. Well, you're not good at them. They drain you and you don't really want to use them. Mm. And then um, learned behaviors, which uh, you use them, you're pretty good at them, but they drain you. So yeah. they're often what, often your field of reputation, what you become known for, but they don't necessarily light you up anymore. So really what we want to do is we want to have you working in your realized strengths as much as possible, but also bring your unrealized strengths up to the platform too because they're there, but you're not using them as much. So yes, the strengths profile, and I'd love anyone listening to this that this resonates with, I'm really happy to offer a, a $50 discount code to anyone on your podcast. Um, and we can pop this in the show notes, but I'll give you guys a link and you'll just use the code wellbeing because that's what I always associate with you, Kate, as um, the code at, at the checkout and they can get a, a discount on the um, on the strengths profile. So they do the questionnaire and then the two of us have an hour's debrief together because I will see things in that profile that you won't necessarily see yourself and I'll be able to connect things for you. And then we want to decide, you may get that and go, I'm done. This is brilliant. I'm going off to you know strength all over the world. But if you want to take things further, then yeah, I do do um, coaching and mentoring with women on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, I run retreats, I run dinners, but they're in Australia, so they might be a bit tricky for some of your um, We've got a big listeners. Australian audience. It's our, oh, third, our third biggest audience is in Australia. Yay. So I love my Australian listeners. So, um, and do you know what? It's really great to be able to bring people like you to different areas of the world. And so if you are an Australian, you do want to work, you know, in real life with someone who has got incredible understanding of ADHD, but also all the other things that we've been talking about today, you know, it's an amazing opportunity because genuinely I believe you know with this podcast the power of it is connecting it's connection with like-minded women people anyone that can you know really light that spark within us to kind of flip the script of you know that that dialogue that inner dialogue of nothing's possible how am I ever going to do that you know they can do it why you know I want to do it but how do I get there and you know someone like you is connecting those dots and and, and making it um making it possible and so I just think just this conversation alone has probably been incredibly helpful, but the strengths test I know is is also very helpful. So, Angela, thank you so much. What's your website? Uh, it's just my name, which is angelaraspis.com.au. Weird spelling. It's R A S for Sydney, P for Patrick, A double -S, S for Sydney. dot com. dot au. And there's actually one other. There's um, an assessment on there. It's a free assessment, which I think people will find really helpful as well. And it's about self leadership. So it lets you know where you're at in terms of your level, your current level. What's your foundation? And there's a, a very comprehensive guide that comes out when you do that uh, that assessment. That gives you some very concrete and practical steps and practices that you can start tomorrow to begin to build that that self-leadership base, which I really feel is is that skylight key. So that will be a really helpful thing for your listeners as well. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time, Angela. Uh, lovely to talk to you. And hopefully we can connect again very soon. That would be wonderful. I've really enjoyed it. I love just this opportunity for the exchange of ideas. And if we can, if we can you know, open that skylight for another woman, then that means that she can do it for another woman. And, and so the beat goes on. So that's what it's all about. It's this connection and, and just empowering one another. I think it's incredibly important and it's a delight. I appreciate the time that you've given me. I'm delighted to have Loop as our sponsor for today's podcast. And I honestly love this product because I need it so much in my life. And if you are listening to this podcast, you may be aware of noise sensitivity and the connection with ADHD. Also with misophonia, which is where you can hear people chewing or eating quite loudly. And it is debilitating. And I suffer from this. And so for me, um, Loop earplugs have been a game changer because no longer having to hear all of these sensitive noises and this hypersensitivity when you are trying to concentrate or you're trying to work. And I only had this the other day, I was sat next to someone who was breathing so loudly that I couldn't listen to the actual talk that I was meant to be listening to. And all I could hear was the breathing. 
and I wish I had my loop earplugs then because um, if I had, I know I would have been able to concentrate and focus better. And so it really is something that many of us um, deal with, ADHD and sensory overload. The link is real and noise can be a major trigger. And for people with ADHD, it can be harder to concentrate and socialize. So if you are struggling working in a busy office, if there's music in the background, if people are chatting, I would highly recommend using loop earplugs for this because it helps reduce our anxiety and stress because if we can't work, we can't concentrate. And we are feeling triggered and we're feeling overwhelmed when we are in this situation. And we may have to leave the um, room, we may have to work somewhere quiet, quieter and especially if you are listening to this and you're doing exams or you have are having to work in an, an environment that really matters to get this detailed information out there where you have to concentrate and focus and it is also difficult when we can hypersensitive to lots of noise with decision making and processing the information that's exactly what happened to me when all I could hear was this person breathing really loudly next to me I wasn't processing the information that I needed to so what I love about loop earplugs is that they understand ADHD they understand misophonia they understand these hypersensitivities and they specifically have different earplugs for it so they have one called experience which is great for music and events just dimming the the noise down the background noise down slightly And they've also got something called the loop engage, which is good for conversation. So say someone is, the voice is very loud. It could be really off-putting and difficult to engage and communicate. So if we've got our loop earplugs in, it really does help. And especially in sort of social gatherings, if there's background noise and lots of conversations going on and it can feel really overwhelming. And very often, you know, we want to leave those social situations because it can just feel too overstimulating. So you may also be a parent. And if you are a parent, there's a very high chance you've got an ADHD child in the mix. And we do know about ADHD children, they can be quite noisy. There's lots of energy, lots of stimulus, and they tend to be very sort of loud and noisy and energy. And for us as adults with ADHD, that can be um, really difficult. So I would highly suggest you head over to Loop Earplugs and I have a a discount code for you. I'm really excited um, to be able to offer this to you. It's 10%. So if you head to the show notes of today's podcast, you will see, you just click on that link. It will take you straight through to the 10% discount. And then you'll be able to see the different Loop Earplugs, which are right for you and you can make a decision. But if you click on the ADHD section on the Loop website, it will give you more information or if it is misophonia that you are wanting more help with, they have a whole section on there. So it's a really fantastic website that really helps you understand where those noise sensitivities are and which earplug to help you with. So just head to the show notes of today's episode and you'll see my loop discount code and link there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. I hope you found what you were looking for in this conversation and it has helped guide you towards some further self-healing, self-exploration and most importantly, self-acceptance. And if you have enjoyed this conversation and would like to experience more of my work, such as access to exclusive live workshops and opportunities for group coaching sessions, connecting with other like-minded women, and a general feeling of belonging, please come and check out my monthly membership, the ADHD Women's Wellbeing Collective. I've made it as affordable as possible, and I offer you lots of resources and opportunities for connection and support from other women all around the world being diagnosed with ADHD later on in life. I'd absolutely love to see you there. All the details are in this episode's show notes or on my website, adhdwomenswellbeing.co.uk. See you in the next episode.